Nicholas Horne. One of the great things about publishing is that you have a golden opportunity not merely to produce a good book, but also to dress a good book and put it in a jacket which makes it look sexy. On this particular occasion, I have to disappoint you strongly. The book we are about to discuss looks as if it's been printed on lavatory paper, but don't let appearances fox you, because within this handsome book lies the biography of a very well-known lady called Constance Spry. And who, one might ask, was Constance Spry? Constance Spry was the person who basically invented the art of floral design. And she did so at a time when it was hardly looked upon as anything but trade, was gently frowned upon in London society, and was looked down upon as being very much an also ran by the masses at large. This lady clawed her way up from almost nothing. She was born almost in a back garden in Derbyshire, and became the toast of the town at a time when London was emerging from the slumbers of the First World War and really roaring ahead before the second. She carved a niche for herself which was largely unparalleled. She ran a house and a property in South Audley Street, which is a lovely part of Mayfair for those of you who know London. And the Constance Spry enterprise became so powerful in its time that it even spawned a cookery book. This remarkable lady is now the subject of a book by Sue Shepherd. And it's called, quite rightly, I think, The Surprising Life of Constance Spry. And at the risk of repeating myself, I don't think you need to look at the rather yellow, faded and dated jacket. Perhaps that was even deliberate. But look within and absorb the significance of this remarkable woman as she wended her way with grit and determination through the ranks of London society to reach the elevated level she did. I give you one short paragraph as an example. In the summer of 1934, Siri Mon wrote to Connie telling her that she'd sold the Villa Elisa in Le Touquet and made an arrangement to rent the Pavilion, a Victorian folly in the grounds of Waddesdon, the Rothschild estate near Aylesbury. Siri, who was no gardener, begged Connie to come and see what could be done in the garden. Connie knew several members of the Rothschild family who were great garden lovers, especially Lionel Rothschild at Exbury, and was very curious to see the place. Now, if she could have thought, at the age of 20, as a nobody, that she would be plugged into the Rothschilds to say nothing about royalty and the carrier of a royal warrant, I think she would have been mightily surprised. This is a very interesting story of a highly successful tradeswoman who became, in her lifetime, a household name. And if we're looking for a 20th century equivalent of Mrs. Beaton, you found it. So I recommend warmly The Surprising Life of Constance Spry for those of you with a horticultural bent. Good night.